the map tool corner with me, Felonius the Wizard. Today I'm going to show you some um, extremely old games, and not, they're not, you're not able to get them anymore, I suppose, not in any new dealership. Um, the first one you can see for yourself, it's called Fight for the Sky. It's from the Battle of Great Britain, Battle of Britain, um, and it's a very easy going strategy game. It's actually, I think they have set the difficulty to one. Um, in order to fix this one, I had to scan a lot of markers, as you can see over here. There are plenty of them. And this one on the Allied side, they are each one different. On the Axis side, or should I say just the German side, I just made one of each and then I just copied them. It was the easiest way. Hopefully you can see the difference between style and size. These are all the markers, all the planes or whatever you can call it, flights, that you are using actually uh, in both sides. Over here we have uh, the losses for each one and inside these ones I've actually put a handout. So here you have the basic game roster. You need to have this one in order to play the game. Um, there are out there as PDFs as well, so it's easy to find if you need them. The German one is a bit bigger, mainly because he has to keep track of more planes, of course. These are for the basic game roster. If you are trying to do the big one, the intermediate or the campaign, where you are actually moving through eight days of bombing and attacking. Um, it is a bit bigger and I haven't put it in. What markers uh, do we have more? We have the game turn. Each day is 16 turns and we have the set uh, thing how to do it, the sequence of play. First, the Luftmaffen player moves his unit and the RAF player moves his units. All combats are fought, Luft player often play advanced game turn marker. This one. And when you reach that one, you, if you're starting the campaign, you are actually doing it one more time. And eight times total. Everything you need is on the board, except for one thing, and that is the tables you are rolling against and a 1d6. Now, I have made, of course, the macros for that, and in order to do that, I had to learn tables. Um, it was the only way to do it. Now, let's see how they look. Here are, uh, according to that one, he's attacking with FL4, that's this one. And if he's doing that against these, you have to account for how many flights he has to offer and stuff. But the main thing is, if that one, the Squadron 65 with four flights, as you can see it's Squadron 65 type Spitfire, he's got a movement of six. His home base is Hornchurch, he's got four flights, and he's got fuel six. That is, he needs to get landed and refueling again um, within six moves. So he can only be up and about for about four, three to four attacks, and then he has to get back again. But he's also have the largest range, so to speak. Um, we can see for a, a squadron, the 151 squadron for the Hurricane, it's got movement of five. Home base, North Weld. Also flights of four and got fuel of eight, so he can keep them up a bit longer. But on the other hand, North Weld is up here somewhere. Right. Now let's say that this Hornchurch-based 65 squadron is going to attack a stack of bombers. How many they are actually doesn't really matter, because he's going to attack anyway. Now this flight system is a bit odd. 
but it is really the only difficult part to understand. If I'm attacking with 4 against his, I'm using the table 4, and then I roll a dice. Okay, you can't see the chat, have to get that. Spitfire is rolling that one. You shot down zero plane. That is, you rolled probably a one or a two. If, however, he had shot down a plane, let's do it one more time, then he'd have to use this one. Losses. Shot down one plane. Oh, we shouldn't have any facing that one. And when you came to the fourth you actually remove one flight. One flight is um, one quarter of the amount inside one of these ones. And when you have tried, done that, that's a 16 planes in, in the same uh, marker, the marker is gone. So you can easily see that in the basic game that will not happen unless everyone is attacking one single uh, one. There is, however, one difference. It's the Stuka, the Junkers U U87. They got six flights, but there's only two of these markers, so they can't have more than 12 in flights in total. And the Stukas are bombing a bit accuracy. You got a plus one on those ones. Now, let's push one of the Stukas and you can see that we have bombing uh, 1 to 3, that's flights and bombing 4 to 7 8 to 15, and that's not important, it's 8 to 12 and here's the attacking uh, of planes he's only got 8 and 11 and actually, if he's rolling a 5 or a 6, he's got a chance to do anything. Normally, a 6 is a hit, but there is some advanced things. Now, I had to do each and every one of these things. But in order to show you them all, I can just as well do this. I also got the anti-air, because inside each one of these, there are an anti-air value. And if you are staying, if the Luftwaffe player is staying on top of us, we have to use this one. And as you can see, I'm using the tables and the macros for that as well. Now let's remove the macro itself. And here I have all of these ones. I don't need to have them up, I just have them because you can see them. And usually I have the campaign. Up. The tables, I need to see that as well this time. This time I have to learn about the tables. And they are quite a few, but easily enough you just copy and rename them. So Tabel Bow is bombing, Who is hurricane, Sp is spitfire, and so on. And then the air as well. So the tables are really easy to do. Let's open one. And here you have them. The name, what kind of row. Uh, if you leave that blank, he will count, he will give you the default later on. And now you can see, if I'm rolling a 1, he is shooting down one plane. If I'm rolling a 5, I'll get two plane. I can also use an image here if I want to. And I haven't done that in this game, but it should be. You can just as well just make sure that you are, if you're a big fan of drawing things, draw your own things with a plane singling down from the earth, from the skies. It is fired from the skies. Now we're going to take the one ones. Um, is there anything special about this one? No, not really. It is a two-play game. Uh, you have a setup phase uh, where the bomber has to be stacked and in secret. And in order to keep it a secret, I actually made a Luftwaffe cover marker that will show 
that will not show how many there are under. Um, this is actually the back side of the other markers. And of course, we can always have that one as well. They stack and they start at their points. It's these cross. This is over here. The uh, Luftwaffe player have to have they have to follow these uh, arrows in order to get to the places he will. He can't divert into any other route. He has to follow these ones, mainly because it is the quickest way to and throw. And uh, back home he can take any route he wants, but two, he needs to take the right route. Uh, if there's any player out there who is looking at my A, B, C, D, E, F, H, Where's the G down there? That's actually where I put my hunter packs, if you're using the extra rules, where you can put out three markers, 12 flights, of hunter packs uh, of the Messerschmitt BF-109 and keep um, the Spitfires and the Hurricanes from going over and attacking out on over the English Channel. Uh, that's a good rule. The fact that the, the Germans didn't use that to any extent is actually one of the reasons they failed to get inside the Battle of Britain. There are some other stuffs as well. That August in 1941. Or was it 42? Can't remember the point. Anyway, we have the dates at least here, haven't we? Yeah, it's from the 11th to the 18th of August. Yeah. Right, now this game from a tactics game made by Emmett Hill Limited is actually very hard to get and I know for the fact that on top on Board Game Geek or other sites there are people who is actually weeping because they don't own it and I will not let mine go. Now, this is a way of playing fight for this guy anyway. I'm calling it flight for this guy? No oh, there. I have to rename that one. Now this is one of the games that is hard to get. Now let's go and see another one. Okay. This is the game Flux. It's from Wo uh, Wotan Games in London. And there are some other stuff. The rules is actually both in English, French, German and Swedish, which actually is rather fun. Uh, this is also a hard game to get. And it's about, well, the players are wizards competing against one another for the title of Master of Wizards. I'm reading inside the, the rules now. This annual event, held on the Great Plains of Grob, you can see it yourself, during the month of 4th February, is used to select the lore master for the associated and amalgamated guild of wizards, warlocks, witches and magic users for the coming year. Thankfully, the days when the losers were lowered slowly into a cauldron of boiling zligion, oil laced with bat wings and viper droppings, are long gone. <laughs> Nowadays they leave out the bat's wings. It has a humorous twist. You are playing one of these magnificent wizard. We have one here. Um, now, we shouldn't have put it a blue, the, the color, of course not, but still, I do it because in the beginning it was very hard to see the difference between the orange and the red one. So I had to do something about that. <laughs> and not to mention the green one. It was actually in possible to change it from the blue one. So I started by using these names. You are the wizard and you are going to start on the orb that is your 10 flux. Yes, the magic we are using is called flux. It's not um, the usual stuff we are using. Like. So it's called flux. And there are some other flux globes out here and you have to corner them. Now you can move one and then you can do some, you have ten, you can do some some um, other animate or 
um, um, make some earth. The, the purpose of the game, you have 10 times to do this, is to, so to speak, surround. Well, let's do a facing here. Oh. Oh dear, I haven't done this one right. Thank you. Now, you can use this, as you can see, to surround. I have to fix this one top down. Thank you. I have done that. So that you are covering with your. Um, the earth you are actually covering a territory. Now this two globe is now inside my territory. I've just made those lines in order to show you how it's work. So you can now get two more flux and every start of every turn you get your 10 plus whatever you have encountered. But these ones actually can make break, make or break each one of the others. I can't remember what the phoenix did. Oh yes, it can destroy as, I wonder what that is, let's see, destroy swamps with a, a six. So, we need to have some, let's see, I can get my macros to work. No, we don't have any macros on this one. Now we have your casting. No successful. Yay! And so on. So this one can't go over some things and it can destroy nothing. Mountains are actually good things because there's not many who can destroy mountains. I think it's the troll. No? No. It's the blue gnome. Let's say that the gnome is on. <laughs> he just went away. He went to someone else's mountain. He can destroy that with a row. So we do destroy mountains. The mountains are removed. He did it. So that is how it worked. And after 10 rounds, the one with most um, flux is a winner. I think that is how it is. So that is how you do. You can also fight with the animates, but you can never hurt the wizard. Um, you start with 10 flux, and he's got movement of one. He can't destroy anything, so. You can't see these ones. Put any on that one. Yet again, I had the use of making tables, and if you can see, this this is the table we are using on the board. But instead of using tables in Map Two, I did something else. I did the single macro for each and every one. It was easy to do, and I learned how to make an input value. For the new wizard in this case, he's getting 12. But okay, you now have 22 flux, and so on and so on. So I did learn anything, something from this one. This game I have seen one more time out for sale on the flea market. So uh, I thought that maybe this is, well, maybe this is fun to just make. And so it did. It was, it was very easy. The most problematic thing I had was the board, of course. Um, this is how it works. If there are any other board games that you feel like you want, um, I might have it. I just haven't made it for map tools yet. Um, just give me a holler and in the comments below and I will see what I can do. Well, that's it. Now, hopefully I will have a whole game show next time. It's a game where we, we have already seen it last time. 
it's blah blah blah. Hopefully I will be able to show you a bit more of how it works and so forth. So thanks for watching. Thank you. Bye.